Welcome to Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast, brought to you in proud partnership with JNS Accessories and Bimoto Motorcycle Insurance. Hello and welcome to Off Track, the motorcycle racing podcast. I'm your host, Dave Neal. Welcome to Family Power Sports at Austin, Texas. More importantly, ladies and gentlemen, the MotoGP legend that is John Hopkins. Hoffa, welcome to Off Track, mate. How are you? Yeah, good, good. Good to be at the uh, American round of MotoGP. Obviously, we only have the one a year, but uh, yeah, it's always a good one being, uh, even though British Grand Prix were always my more home races, just because I had more family in the UK than I ever did here in the US. But uh Still, being born in America, it's always nice being at an American Grand Prix. And then obviously working now with American Racing, um, you know, it's a uh, it's a big event. And yeah, I think it's going to be uh, a good weekend for uh, for both of our boys, British and American. I'm looking forward to seeing what happens this weekend. But uh, if you could explain to the, the viewers and the listeners just your involvement with American Racing and how it came about. Yeah, well, right now I am uh, considered as race director of American Racing, uh, kind of rider coach to the riders um, as well. Uh, kind of all started in 2019, the end of 2019. Uh, I ended up meeting with uh, with the then and now uh, team owner, uh, Eaton Butbull, Um and they were kind of looking to bring in on a, uh, a rider coach. And uh, he was kind of looking as a, at, a, at a partner um, to kind of help him out because obviously he's always been a big fan of racing himself, but he was never really truly involved with racing. He kind of took it over and took the team over on the whim of things uh, because he was a jo- personal manager to Joe Roberts at the time. Joe was with the team. He was going to be left without a ride. Uh, so Eaton, you know, he's, he's quite financially stable. He was quite fortunate at the time to be able to actually take over the team when they got into financial trouble and the old team owner kind of left. It was going to leave Joe without a ride. So Eaton stepped in and actually took over the team uh, to obviously, you know, continue to have for Joe to have a ride for the remainder of that year, since it was still quite early when that all kicked off and happened. And, uh, you know, they, they were, uh, getting their, their, you know, growing pains and, and kind of understanding the, the way of running a team. And, uh, I was actually right at the point of, uh, figuring out what I was going to do life after racing. Uh, I was just kind of early in my uh, retirement, still kind of dealing with the fact that I wasn't able to race motorcycles anymore for a living, uh, figuring out, well, what the hell am I going to do now uh, kind of thing. And I obviously knew I wanted to be involved with racing to some capacity, but I wasn't sure where and how and what I was going to do. And uh, it was like it was meant to be. It uh, it worked out perfect. Like I said, uh, it just happened that they were looking to bring someone on to work with Joe. Uh, Eaton and I ended up getting along and just instantly kind of hit it off. And, uh, you know, things kind of went rolling into that uh, from that point. And, and we started building. We we partnered, uh, you know, with, with stuff with the team. Uh, we partnered in a management business, uh, which obviously Rory and now Sean are both uh, – under us in terms of management, um, along with a few other riders, but, uh, and then we started the American racing Academy here in America because that year that, uh, everything kicked off, uh, we started with a great year. Joe went from best position position ever was like, a 16th or 17th prior to, uh, to us coming on or me coming on board to the team. And then instantly at Qatar, he uh, he got the lap record. He was pole position. Uh, he ended up fourth in the race. I, he would have come quite confident. He actually would have been on the podium if not won it had he been in that position prior. Um, and then COVID hit, and then that was it. We were we were sat sitting on our hands for three months, not knowing what to do. And uh, instead of just sitting at home and uh, basically isolating, well, we were still isolating quite a bit, but uh, Eaton and I then started the American Racing Academy uh, just because we had the time on our hands and kind of figured out what we were going to do. And then so we just kept building. And uh, like I said, everything kind of steamrolled into what we have now. Obviously, we took over and started working with Rory uh, quite a few years ago. And uh, it's been quite a project, obviously, trying to get Rory into uh, the Moto2 class. I mean, instantly from when I first started working with Rory, uh, I've 
big fan of British Superbike, obviously, from all the times that I spent there and racing there. And uh, I've always watched it quite closely, always been a big fan, obviously, of British riders. And uh, the the year that I saw Rory win the, uh, well, I've, I've, I've always knew Rory was strong because I was actually racing in British Superbike when he was uh, racing in the, the British Talent Cup at the time. And uh, I saw how talented he was then. I saw how talented he was as he made his way through the ranks. Unfortunately, he got kind of a bad hand and and sore deal out of the British Talent Cup, which was uh, I was actually quite annoyed to see. Uh, but then he made the best of his situation, went out and destroyed the the British Super Sport Championship one year. Uh, and me knowing at at how competitive that class is, and you know what it takes as a rider just to win it in first place and for him to go out and destroy it, uh, you know, instantly you could tell he was a, a pretty special talent. And, uh, you know, we've been trying to get him into Moto2 for quite a few years now, a long, long time. And, uh, and it just unfortunately hadn't worked out yet for our team just because Sean had uh, had a basic letter of intent. And, you know, we obviously been working with Sean for quite a few years. He was uh, kind of the next in line to come onto the team. We had Cameron Bouvier, who had basically signed a two-year deal, uh, had extended that for another two years. But then, uh, you know, he unfortunately decided he, he didn't want to do the whole world championship anymore. And, uh, you know, the traveling and the commitments and where he was at in his career, he, you know, was struggling to do that. And so it actually worked in our favor where we could bring Rory onto the team and, uh, no, everything work works for everything happens for a reason. And, uh, and I'm pretty happy with where we're at now. I mean, my role on the team, I enjoy it. I love being able to share my experience, all the knowledge, all the what not to do's in racing, <laughs> I guess, but, uh, that's a whole different story. <laughs> yeah. But that's a, that's a whole nother path. We'll do but, that another day. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But no, where I'm at right now, I can't complain. I love it. Um, you know, I'm working with, with great, great riders, you know, riders that, uh, in the most part would never really get the opportunity to be where they're at, you know, especially now with all the Spanish and Italian and, you know, what they're doing in, in Spain and GP kind of really focusing on those primary countries, uh, riders that wouldn't generally get the opportunity to be in Moto2. We've got that opportunity to bring those riders in and show, you know, hey, we still have, you know, fast riders within England, you know, Britain, Scotland, America, and uh, and build them up and, and make them competitive, I think is uh, there's more benefit to that than bringing in, you know, the next hot Spanish rider, the next, you know, Italian rider or whatever. It's uh, it's it's kind of a big goal of ours here at the team at American Racing. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. How much do you enjoy passing on that knowledge to to the riders and being the rider coach as, as well as having the uh, the senior position in the team to be able to to finally impart all that knowledge through British Superbikes, through World Superbikes, through MotoGP, the, the, the career that you've had is that such a wealth of knowledge. And, and for me, for, for you passing it on to Sean and to Rory, it's a massively invaluable project. Yeah, a hundred percent. It's, uh, it's good. Like I said, it's, it's, pretty wild because the differences between MotoGP and and production-based machinery like uh, Superbike, uh, super sport machinery, is two entirely different types of riding. It's, it's, it's as if they were two different sports altogether. Um, you know, as Rory will tell you now, like the differences between a Moto2 bike compared to what a, a production-based bike is, is completely different. Um, the way that you ride, the way that you handle the machine, the way that you even just ride the machine in general, throttle, body position, uh, the way that you use, you know, front, rear brake, uh, just all kinds of different scenarios, which is, like I said, entirely different types of riding and, and having spent 10 years riding one and 10 years riding the other uh, professionally, um, being able to pass on that knowledge and experience and everything, like you said, that wealth of knowledge uh, is huge. Um, and it's something that I actually enjoy more seeing the riders actually benefit from the knowledge and that experience and everything that I'm able to pass over and seeing them benefit from it and seeing them, you know, succeed and actually benefit out of it within their own career 
gets more of a of a personal gratification and a personal satisfaction than I think I ever did within my own racing career. Um, I actually feel honored and 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 a and a feeling of success rather than I. A, far greater than I think I ever did within my own career of racing when I succeeded in racing. Um, you know, and being able to pass that over is is huge. So it's uh, it's something I've always done even throughout my career. Because even when I was racing, um, I always helped out younger riders, whether it was motocross, whether it was road racing. Um, like I sponsored multiple riders during the the height of my, uh, my racing career, like PJ Jacobson, I had sponsored him. He's a young American rider who was coming up at the time. He, he still kind of races now. Um, but, uh, you know, I had, I had supported him all the way through his younger rakes, bought him a ride in the CEV championship when he was just starting out. Uh, so it was something I always enjoyed and something I always liked to do, but, uh, you know, motorcycle racing has always been my life. It's been my life since I was four years old and my, my parents taught me how to ride in the deserts of California. Um, so to be able to continue that, I, you know, there was no way after I was done racing that I was ever going to go and do something else other than something to do with motorcycle racing. So, um, you know, I'm fortunate to be in the position that I am, but, uh, at the same time, uh, you know, I'm working a lot harder than I think I ever did when <laughs> when I was racing a motorcycle. So you, you have know, responsibility now. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's a lot of responsibility and uh, you know action that takes uh, quite a bit of time. Um, but I can't complain. I mean, it's uh, you know to be involved in motorcycle racing is is greatest job in the world no matter what you're doing so you know even you speak to the mechanic doing so. this yeah exactly doing this <laughs> from your level to this level yeah. it's just motorcycle racing yeah. and it is the greatest sport on earth yeah exactly. I absolutely love it we, we get everybody has a passion for it we wouldn't be here if we didn't yeah definitely. we wouldn't be in texas with with you guys this weekend if we didn't have the passion for it yeah. um one thing and because only a, a, a quick chat this one and there's plenty of people outside waiting for you um one thing I've noticed from the social media, both from Sean and from Rory, um, after your operations recently, you're back out on the bike and the boys are keeping you honest on the supermotos and everywhere else. It's almost playtime for you as well, isn't it? They're keeping you sharp. John. Yeah, exactly. No, they're keeping me sharper than ever, you know, having to uh, having to keep up with these young kids and then obviously my competitive nature. Um they're making me, uh, they're making me push, you know, having to keep up with these kids and, you know, I still want to be the man showing them what to do. And, uh, you know, I, I'm still the the coach. I got to be the, uh, the, you got to be the lead. I got to be, be the I gotta, I, seniority out there. I've got to, I've got to show them seniority. So, uh, I can't let them show me what to do. So I've got to, uh, I've got to stay sharp. I got to stay on my feet and, uh, show them how it's done. But, uh, no, it's great. Like just to be back on a motorcycle and, uh, you know, I, I had a recent hip replacement and, um, that, I mean, pff, literally has given me a new life, a uh, new lease on life, a new life in general. I mean, I hadn't ridden my motocross bike for over six, seven years. And that was basically my life even prior to road racing. So to be back and ride motocross and, uh, you know, supermoto dirt track and, uh, and mixing it up with these young kids, uh, has given me a, a new lease of life. And I, yeah, I love it. So, so cool. It's great to see you back on a bike and great to see you working so hard with the younger riders. One last thing, Cota this weekend, circuit of the Americas, it's the U S GP American racing. What are your hopes and expectations for the weekend? Uh, I've got high expectations uh, for this weekend, um, but they've got to be realistic expectations. Um, you know, Rory, it's a track that he's actually going to slightly know where he's been. He's never uh, raced here, never spent, you know, real kind of race time on this track. But we did do a track day, which was on the Moto2 bike uh, towards the end of last year. So he knows where he's going. It's not a huge like benefit to him, but, uh, you know, or an advantage, but it's a track that he knows where he's going. It's a lot better than a lot of the other places we're going to go this year with him. So, uh, on the other hand, it's also a very rough kind of bumpy, high elevation change kind of circuit, which kind of suits similar to uh, British superbike kind of tracks. Um, so I expect him to go quite well. Uh, you know, realistically, I think if Rory can can 
I think there's a possibility he might be able to get into the points, might be able to get into the top 15. If that happens, I would treat that almost as if, a, a, you know, top five podium, you know, for other riders. You know, if he gets into the, the points here, that's going to be a real, real uh, good weekend. That's going to be a real positive weekend, especially with being, you know, just a few races into the first season of ever racing a Moto2 bike. That's a great result uh, in terms of Sean. I believe there is possibility he can get up into the top 12, top 10. Um, you know, it's uh, it's kind of a big ask. You know, Sean, with the level that he was at, like, to be fair, I mean, the only thing that Sean really has on Rory at the moment is time and experience on the sure. Moto2 bike. Uh, but in terms of the actual level itself, Sean came from... Moto America Super Sport Racing, which the level is is far, far lower than what it is over in Europe and in British Superbike, Super Sport and Superbike. The level over there is top, top world Superbike top level that Rory has been racing at for the last two to three years. Uh, Sean and I believe Rory have the similar same kind of talent, but where Rory's been for the last couple of years in his career to where Sean's been the last few years in his career, uh, although Sean did race full time with Moto2 last year, their levels are actually quite similar. Um, so, you know, I can't say I expect one to be here and the other here, but I believe they are both going to push each other because as Rory starts to find his feet with the Moto2 bike and starts to better himself, it's going to push Sean to new levels that he hasn't been before. And I think it's going to be uh, a good mixture of those two being together. But again, I think this weekend... If, Tom, if I think if Sean could get into the top 10, that would be almost like a top five podium, you know, result for other kind of teams or, or expectations. But uh, yeah, top 15 for Rory would be an amazing one. And I think they both are uh, capable of doing so. Fantastic. I can't wait to see how the weekend pans out. John Hopkins, thank you so much for joining us and we'll catch up with you over the weekend. Thank you. Welcome Brilliant. back to Off Track. I'm your host, Dave Neal. This is Power, uh, Family Power Sports in Austin, Texas. This is the second time we've done this because yet again, I forgot to press start on the button. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, American Racing, Sean Dylan Kelly. Sean, welcome to the show, mate. Thank you very much. Excited to be here talking to you guys. We're in here for the American GP. We're at Cota this weekend. You must be so pumped for the weekend. Yeah, I'm super excited, man. Uh, already second second time here, second year in Moto2. And I'm just really excited to be with the home crowd and obviously try and do a really good job for the team and for myself and for everybody around as well. Tell us about the season so far. We're two rounds in to your second season on the Moto2. Tell me about it so far. Yeah, honestly, I'm super excited with, with uh, how we're doing so far. Honestly, it's been a really good start. Um, I have a new crew chief and a couple changes within the within the team. So the structure and the way of working has changed up a little bit. And I think it's been going really well so far. You know, testing, I started to get better understanding with the bike. And um, honestly, Portugal and Argentina has just been building and building. Last week in Argentina was my first time getting into Q2. Um, really unfortunate in the race that we had a technical problem, but I was up in the points, uh, I think P14 right when that happened. So um, yeah, I think I'm hitting all my targets so far and I just feel like I'm definitely growing and getting a lot more confidence on the bike, which is something that I definitely lacked last, la la sorry, lacked last year. So yeah, just building and uh, it makes me more excited coming into this weekend, you know, just uh, putting everything together and looking forward to a, a solid weekend. Your new teammate this year with Rory Skinner, our own British uh, Moto2 racer. Yeah. Having a a experienced teammate as Cambobia as you had last year the, the, with the target I was talking to Hopper prior to you coming in and he said about a sort of achievable targets now you have a, a teammate that you can really set yourself against and set the bar against that must be a, a kind of a refreshing change for you yeah no it's definitely a big change I mean I was angry at Cam when he when he when he announced that he was leaving last year just because um, I knew Cam from Moto America obviously he was kind of the reference right I was in super sport coming in he was winning in Superbike, so just for me to have been able to share with cam was super cool i learned a lot um the guy was obviously fast when he wanted to <laughs> but no it was cool to to be able to be with with him even though it was it was also tough you know at the end of the day your uh, your teammates always your your number one competitor and last year he was you know really able to fight up there and it was my rookie year but at the same time you know like i said i learned a lot from that and now it's super cool to have rory uh as my teammate 
great. I raced with him in Rookies Cup. So we we go way back years ago. And it's been really cool to be sharing the box with him. Um, definitely expecting to have some really good battles this year. And at the end of the day, I mean, we're just pushing ourselves. You know, like I said, your competitors, you know, uh, your your teammates, your number one competitor. And uh, I think it's important for us to have the good relationship that we have. Um, but we both want to be up front, you know. So we're just pushing each other up. And we want to do a good job for the team, too. How, what's the, the biggest thing you've learned over the last, let's go for sort of 14 months since the start of last season? How have you developed it as a rider and what's the biggest thing you've learned about yourself? Yeah, I mean, I've, I've gotten that question a few times already. And honestly, it's hard for me to answer because it's, it's so many things. Like last year, you know, it was my first time uh, in the world championship, which is a dream for me. You know, I'm, it's incredible for me to even even say again that I'm still in the world championship because it's it's something that I've been working hard uh, really hard for 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 forever now since I started when I was five. Uh, for my family, it's something amazing. But um, at the same time, you know, as much as it's a dream and I'm I'm super excited to be here, I want to do I want to do well, right? I'm I'm here because I want to fight for for to be up front, and uh, and it was really challenging last year. I had a lot of challenges, uh, new team, new people, new bike, um, new tracks, new competition and it definitely was was tough you know um but i think at the end of the day i look back and i i feel like i had a lot of things thrown at me um even with all these changes i still had difficult moments th during the year um i had some really gnarly crashes i uh, had some injuries some sometimes that you know uh in, in Aus austria someone took me out broke my foot had to race 10 days later in Mizano, which was that was the first for me having to race with uh, with an injury so just a lot of factors at the end of the day i just felt like you know i just had to tough it out you know a lot of things that were not necessarily going my way but that's just racing sometimes you know i, I look back and um as they say you know tough times just make you stronger so i kind of just stuck stuck with that all season long just chugging along and um i really feel like after i finished the year you know i was able to look back and say all right you know i i definitely didn't feel how I wanted to on the bike. I didn't feel confident. I didn't feel natural, but I went through all this stuff that I just know it's going to make me strong. And I was able to build on that off season, uh, during the off season. And I feel like already coming into this year, I'm, I'm able to, you know, put everything together. And, and like I said, just be myself. Do you find things are magnified compared to the Moto America paddock to come into a, a GB <laughs> paddock? Because it's, oh, man. it's, it, it, you couldn't be more night and day with the intensity of a, of a world, especially a Moto GP paddock. Yeah. N not, you know, notwithstanding world superbikes, no but from Moto America no to, to world championship, it's like the yeah. first day at big school again. Yeah, yeah, no, dude, big time. It was, it was like going into college for the first time, you know, when you're just going from like a little high school and you're just going to college for the first time. That's exactly what it feels like. Like everything is just, it's massive. It is, you just can't compare, right? And obviously I'm not talking Moto America down. I think the no, series no. is fantastic and I'm really proud of what I was able to do there and win the championship. And it obviously gave me the opportunity to come here. So um, no doubts about that, but also the change here is massive, right? Like um, the amount of money that revolves around here is, is insane. Um, the trucks, the people, the personnel, the way of working, the bikes, machinery, um, and also the, the structure, right? Then the structure of work the way everything is set up the tracks tracks are fucked it yeah <laughs> next level um and then also the the fan base right like we get to some weekends where we're seeing you know 250,000 people in one weekend and that's 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 a lot of people right so um it's cool it's exciting and at the end of the day i mean i'm living my dream so no complaints the home round this weekend as you said just i know you you need to get away and, and i really appreciate your time no this worries. evening no rush. ahead of the weekend <laughs> Um, what are your expectations in front of your home fans this weekend? Yeah, I mean, I want to do pole position and I want to win. <laughs> I mean, right? No, Thank I mean, you very much. Good yeah, night. <laughs> no, I, I definitely, I mean, I definitely want to be up front, right? But let's be, let's be realistic, right? Um, last weekend, like I said in Argentina, I got my first Q2. Proves you can do it. Yeah, it's yeah, there. no, absolutely. I mean, I got into Q2, so that's that's my number one goal. I mean, I want to want to be in Q2 just because it, it puts me in a much better position for for fighting for the points. Um, I was in the points when uh, when we had that technical problem in Argentina, and yeah, I mean, I just I want to do I want to do a good job and i want to be fighting as, as high up as i can so we're gonna do i'm gonna give it absolutely everything wonderful as soon as you're gonna give me a couple more minutes which track are you looking forward to most this year now you've grown as a moto 2 rider you're going back to every circuit that we yeah. did last year so which one are you looking back to go like we've got unfinished business yeah so uh, 
all of them. <laughs> uh, I'll say all of them, but no, I mean, th this was definitely one of them, Coda. I mean, it's home track, but I have a, a couple of, you know, uh, tracks like Germany was a really good track for me last year, even though I was, it was a tough year. Germany was a good track for me and Phillip Island was a really good track that first time there, I was, I was blown away by that place and it suited me well as well, which- And they both left-handers. Huh? Yeah, yeah, I guess I yeah, that's a good point. I guess I guess I have something a little Mark Marquez in me, a little, little left handers. But no, I had I had something with both yeah, I didn't even realize that. Now, now, I'm like, now I'm thinking about it. I'm like, damn, I gotta start working on the rights. But no, I really I really enjoyed Actually, no, but you no. enjoyed the, the Argentina was good, and that's right. <laughs> there you go. You see, yeah, you didn't you didn't get me there. Throw me the curveball in. Yeah, that, yeah, that, exactly. The so, actually, um, I'm really looking forward to Barcelona as well, and that's a lot of rights. So, you see, all you're doing now is sitting there no, and going, "I wish yeah. the right hand tracks." I was, I, like. I was, but no, Barcelona was another one. I'm really looking forward to Barcelona, and that's that's kind of like my third home track because I'm living in Barcelona yes. during the year. So, yeah, I'd say those are you know a little little handful of what I'm looking forward to. I mean, to throw you under the bus. On no, that. no just worries. Thinking, like, hey, Hang on, you that's did, a left. Yeah, you, did, a left. <laughs> you did get me thinking there, but that was good. That was good. So, yeah, really looking forward to, to a handful of them. I can't wait to see how the weekend progresses for you. We, it's a privilege for us to come and join you for the weekend. Awesome, thank you. So we'll be rooting for you all weekend. Thanks so much. Sean happy. Dylan Kelly, thank you so much. No, no, happy to have you guys and looking forward to the weekend too. Brilliant, thanks. All man. right, thank you. Appreciate it. Let's carry out. Oh, no, let me, let me look at the telly. Go on, do it again. Go on. <laughs> I love this. Love this. Welcome back to Family Power Sports, Austin, Texas. Ladies and gentlemen, one absolute pleasure. It's Rory Skinner. Hello, Hello mate. How are you? All right, Dave. How are you? I'm good. We're doing this in Texas. This is ridiculous. You as a Grand Prix Moto2 racer and us just hanging around for the weekend, making a nuisance of ourselves. What an absolute pleasure to see you, mate. How are you? I'm, I'm all right. It's good. It's just crazy. A year ago, I think we were sitting probably at Oldham Park at this time doing a, a similar chat show at, uh, in, in No MG Hospitality. You know? So it's crazy how things change in a year, but it's, it's, it's amazing to be here. How's it going, mate? That's the main question. How's it been, the start to the season and the build-up? Because that been, was huge. It's been pretty hectic. You know, I've, I've not actually been home since we started testing. So it's been like, I think, five weeks on the road now. But, you know, it's been good. We've just kind of chipped away at things and been making steady improvements the whole time. And yeah, some things go better, some th things go a bit worse. But that's that's racing at the end of the day and that's the learning curve. So we're making progress, I'm getting more and more comfortable on the bike, happier each time I ride it and really getting to know the team a lot more as well. And uh, I think probably as you've seen already from tonight, we've got a good atmosphere going you know, get really get on really well with all the guys and it's a it, yeah it's a nice environment what's been the the thing that's made you smile the most so far about riding the moto two bike oh that's a hard one I, I, i'm not at a point yet where i'm quite comfortable yet so i'm not it's not that i'm not enjoying it it's just things aren't coming quite as easily as what maybe they normally would if that makes sense is it your bike yet it's getting there yeah. it's getting there to be my bike it's it's more i just need to understand it we're not changing an awful lot on it i'm just i need to understand it more that's all it is it's, it's time it's it's the same with anybody who really goes into that class you know you usually see them take a year they've got a couple of standout performances in their first year and then the second year they start to really build on it and you know that's that's what the team the team are aware of that i'm aware of that and you know i think this year is just building a good solid foundation for the following season and then you know I'm a racer I'm as competitive as it gets and I don't want to be down in the with the positions that I'm at, at the minute and yeah I'm training my hardest I'm making sure that I'm doing everything I can to, to make that next step so yeah we're we're making progress in the right direction and that's the main thing what is the main di or what are the differences between when you rode for Apple Yard Macadam on the R6 to or even on the the FS3 racing Kawasaki to ride in a Moto2 machine now from from production to prototype uh, well, I mean, the things that are the same is it's got two wheels and an engine and it's called a motorbike and that's about where the similarities stop. It's just so different. It's the tires are different. The, uh, you know, everything is just so strange. It's uh, it's really bizarre. It's it's such a strange bike to ride, but yeah, that's, a, that's the thing. I'm, I'm getting used to it. I'm understanding it more and more and I've got a good team around me so I can, uh, I can get used to it and, uh, you know, make the most out of the situation. It's a pain in the ass I know. outside the window he's, at the moment. It's just he's just being really Mexican. It's he, just standard shot. He just needs to. He's not even going to grow it. Look, go away. It's because he's hungry. Because he wants pizza. And you're yeah, driving. Well, this so is all, this is only on. making. No, he's wanting Chipotle, and I'd like Chipotle as well. So oh, okay. all he's doing is making this 
wait longer for himself. Oh no, he said he want no, he want not pizza. That's why yeah. we got pizza around the yeah. back, and he's he's being a professional athlete. Well, he had some earlier anyway. Oh, so. did he? Yeah, he said he wasn't going to have any. No, I'm terrible. Sure he had some. And mate, circuit of the Americas. This is going to be a hell of a weekend. A home race for the team and a track that you have ridden already, albeit at a test. At least you know, kind of end of the road, turn left, and yeah, you know that much. Yeah, exactly. I mean, we did a, a two days on a track day here last year. Now, I mean, you can take what you can from a track day. It's not racing. And a lot of the laps were cluttered with uh, track day riders. And, you know, it's not my place to really be on track on a track day. You know, it's a lot of guys are they're there enjoying themselves. But, yeah, we managed to learn kind of what where it goes left, where it goes right. And, yeah, where the, the crests are and some of the bumps. So, you know, it was a while ago now. A lot's, a lot's happened since then. I've done a lot of riding since then. So it's just a case of going out tomorrow and just starting as we have every weekend, just working through the program that we've got. And, yeah, just seeing seeing how things go. How would, apart from the, 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 the issue that the team had in um, Argentina, what would you kind of rate out of 10 the start to the season that, that you've had? I think it's probably been as good as is what it could have been just you know with yeah. how things have gone I'm happy I, I don't think I can rate it out of 10 but I, I'm I'm content with it good you know it's, it's it's I'm not annoyed about anything I wouldn't have done anything any differently it's just it's never nice to see yourself down that far in the board it's but it's one of these things Moto2 is such a tight class all it takes is just that little to find that little next step and unlock 210 through every sector and then you're like halfway up the board again and that, I think that's all it's going to take just me finding that next thing getting more comfortable on the bike and just you know being more comfortable and being in the paddock I've been quite nervous the last two rounds just because it's been all new and I'm not usually one to get nervous I'm usually a really chilled out person and yeah it's just it's, it's, it, because it is so new and it's so so different to what the environment I've been in for the last couple of years it's just getting getting around that but no, we're making steps in the right direction and that's the main thing I asked Sean about that as well because it's, it's- it's a very different environment to Alton Park and Silverstone and the, and the BSB paddock, which is a great place to be. But stepping up into the World Championship paddock in MotoGP, it just, everything works so much differently. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it's, as I said, when you asked about the differences in the bikes, there's there's not much similarity between them, and it's the same with the circuits. You know, Oldham Park to Argentina, I don't think it could be any more different, and Cadwell Park to Portimao. You know, yeah, there's the undulations, but it's uh, it's so different, and yeah, that's the thing. It's a learning curve. I have been on these tracks, uh, albeit a good like what six six years ago now, so it's been a little while. But yeah, it's it's just going to be. This could take time. I'm aware of that. The team are aware of that, and they're not. Putting any pressure on me which is nice it's just a case of it's going to be taking it step by step and trying to just you know remain not being impatient with the process and just trusting it it's important because you need to be hitting this at the, at the right level and that is the way to do it because it's just managing your own expectations I guess more than the teams because you want to be up there you want to see you see Sean go through Q2 you want to go through to Q2 it's just a natural way um, but managing your own expectations probably more so than you've ever had to do in your career so far yeah it's yeah it's kind of a similar thing when I first went into Superbikes you know I'd been riding so well in Supersport the year before I went to Superbikes and I struggled a bit just because I had to adapt and it's the same thing here I've got to adapt but I mean BSB is such a tough field and it always has been I think it always will be but this is just another step above that it's it's everybody in this class is the best in the world at riding these bikes and I'm coming into riding these come, in, coming into this class with minimum time riding these bikes so it's a case of just working into it building through the season and that's really all, all we've got that's all my expectations are just continue building continue learning and I mean the team the team have put me here for a reason they, they've seen something in, in me over the last couple of years and yeah I've just got to work through things and, and reward them for their belief how much of a positive influence has the Hopper been on your career so far? To be honest, me and Hopper, we haven't, we didn't really do an awful lot until like partway through last year. He started coming to a few more BSBs okay. just because of the the calendars. Like, there was a lot of clashing because of COVID, condensing the calendars. And then you know last year, tail end of last year, we started getting on like pretty well. And obviously through the wild cards as well, we got on really well. And then uh, yeah, started this year, went out and went out to California, and yeah, it's been it's been pretty amazing. Me and John have gone on really well. You know, we're, we're really close. I think you've probably seen that tonight. We we got we get on really really well, and it's a nice feeling for me. I've got someone who's really got my back and really passionate about me progressing which is which is great it's a night i've got a friend i've got a friend as much as a manager a manager and a friend as much as he's a writer coach so it's good 
the uh, watching on social media, um, the reels that you put together, the the time you had in California training after Christmas, uh, sort of Jan- mid mid January to kind of end of February almost. Yeah. What an incredible time, and, and what a great way to prepare for your your first full moto, first full world championship season. Oh, definitely. You know the the, the American racing team, my, my management company Apex Management, put together an amazing an amazing program for both me and Sean to go out to America and train. Family Power Sports provided us some some bikes to, to train on the motocross bikes and the supermotos as well, which was which was great. And yeah, it was just gym, cycling, supermoto, motocross on repeat. It was just. It was a dream, really, and and like British summertime weather in January, I just couldn't couldn't quite believe it. It was, it was so good, and then doing it with doing it with your teammate, but then also your mates as well. Like we all had such a good time doing it. It was competitive, but it was like a friendly competitiveness. Yes, we were harsh with each other on track, and it's always going to be like that because we're all racers and we're all competitive. But yeah, at the end of the day, we were having a good time. We all lived together, and it was like it was a really good team bonding exercise, as as well as the training. What coming looking forward to this weekend now? What coming away on Sunday night? What result? What kind of weekend would make you look back and go? Do you know what? We did good there. I think if we can get you know in towards the top twenty and just be in in towards the top twenty is, is my goal. You know, it's it's just taking things small steps at a time. Once we get into the top twenty and be consistent there, then it's looking to just kind of progress into the points. And it's just going to be small steps. It's small things that will make a, a difference and small differences in this class make a make a big change. So it's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll just go with it and we'll, we'll keep chipping away. If I'm not in the top 20 this weekend, I'm not going to be upset. I'm just going to keep working, keep looking at what we need to do differently. And yeah, we'll, we'll get there. We can't wait to see how the weekend unfolds, mate. It's going to be such a, a privilege to, to follow you this weekend and to join you at Kota. And, uh, and I, I can't wait to see how it all works out. But ladies and gentlemen, Rory Skinner, thanks, mate. Thank you very much. One final chat from Family Power Sports, Austin, Texas. I've got to keep saying that because it feels really weird to be here. And if you go back 10 years to when we were doing paddock chatter and we're now sat just outside of Austin in Texas ahead of the American round of MotoGP World Championship. And because you lot like him, I thought I'd invite him back. Ladies and gentlemen, it's Matt and Don. Oh, thanks to all my two or three fans. Hi, Josie. <laughs> I'm just going on the, the podcast for like two, five minutes or something like that. It's- what? Come in. <laughs> <laughs> you can come in if you want. It's me and Alex, and Alex looks like he's about to fucking die. Okay, look after Alex and eating and come back on. <laughs> we will. We'll be, we'll be five minutes. <laughs> getting some grief. Uh, that, was, get, that, was grief. The, that was actually the comms manager. So, yeah, the comms manager doing uh, comms manager things. Do, doing up. comms manager things yeah, 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 so yeah, yeah. while we've kidnapped the content creator yeah, for the exactly. American Racing Moto 2 team. Say, we're, in a, we're in a very glamorous office. I mean, the, yeah, the glamour's no different now, is it? Ten it's, years on. It's no know? different. Um, but for, from the office point of view, thank you, Sam. Uh, from uh, Family Power Sports, we've nicked his office for the evening. Yeah. Um, very grateful to, to Sam for letting us use this place. Um, mate, here we are. I know. Wow. Cool, isn't it? There's worse places to be. Yeah. I mean, I could do with some after sun, but... You, yeah, Jen's not impressed with that. Yeah, she, yeah, she's really already giving you the, uh, the flick for we that. We went one. and produced a video on the track walk today, and this was the result, so... It's nice to see you in your natural environment rather yeah. than J and S at Oatmeal sat on, sat on yeah, your way yeah. back off holiday. This in the um, the reaction that we got to to that chat of having you on was absolutely That's fantastic. Nice. Genuinely, is a lot of people. You, you, well, uh, I'm putting my burner accounts to good use. Then <laughs> <laughs> there's a lot of people who would probably rather it's rather listen to you than me. Well, which is why I was sat in the middle of you and Ben. I'm like. I just feel like a normal host here because you guys strong know opinions, far yeah. more, yeah, strong opinions on certain things. Ben's particularly. But yeah, he does it. And we miss having Ben out here as well because uh, we, we've done a couple of shows without Ben recently Yeah. Um, because he's been building up to the start of the, the British Super Sport season. And, and you can see from even the riders here, you know, Sean and Rory, like even though they are able to switch off more or less a little bit to chat like 10 minutes it's sort of like and then the rest they're like right i'm going back i need my food i need to go to bed with this gotta be this, gotta time, be this. You know, yeah session tomorrow let's go and yeah and we fully understand it and it, it was great to have the boys on earlier on and uh, to have john on as well cool eh? what is it? i mean and thank you for this no because problem. you invited us to this uh, thank you mate it's um it, it's a privilege 
to, to come and sit down and, and do this. And so I thought, well, we'll drag you in. We'll have a bit of a chat and see how we go. Sure. What's your plan for the weekend as content creator for American Racing Moto2, <laughs> their biggest round of the season in front of all their fans? Yeah. No pressure whatsoever. But, you know, what's your role this weekend? Um, well, I'm using the big Sony camera and getting some uh, some content for only fans. That's sort of like one video a day. It's a short three to six minute kind of vlog. So today we shot one of, of the track walk. Uh, but the process involved in that, I mean, it's a the six minute video, but you know, an hour, uh, track walks an hour and a half, about an hour before I'm sorting the equipment, making sure it's charged, make sure the microphone's set up, had a bit of problems with the microphone. So that takes time too. You go out on the track, you're thinking about sort of what do I need to actually ask the riders? What do I want the video to kind of look like? You go out on the track walk, you shoot it, you're walking along, you're getting sunburned, uh, and then you get back and then it was run to the media center and let's see how quickly I can edit it before we come to family power sports. And um, so there's that. And so the whole process is, you know, a good sort of three hours ish or so uh, then we've also got because the Eaton's got a lot of sponsors on board and I'm really I'm, as a, being part of the team I'm even more impressed I don't say it's just because he's paying some of mine and Josie's bills but um, but I'm really impressed with the sponsors he's got on board and how willing they are to sort of create some cool content so we're actually creating some content this weekend with uh, Dell and Intel and as in Josie and I and Eaton went to Dell headquarters in Austin yesterday to go and chat with them about some of the videos we want to shoot with them I mean I, I mean out of this world like what the hell are me and Josie doing in freaking Dell headquarters with my Patagonia shorts and a scruffy team a thing which has been sweated in all day it's not scruffy because <laughs> the uniform's rubbish or anything just scruffy because I am and then my head's sweaty and all that so what the hell you know um, so doing a shot list for that um, getting to very slow motion shots got interviews with people from Dell and Intel tomorrow um, so it's all sorts of stuff which isn't public immediately the stuff that gets published immediately Josie's put her hand to that getting uh, mobile content you know we we create an actual um, a storyline and uh, and a shot list of Instagram stories before they all go out so we know each day today's going out 12 Instagram stories here's what it is uh, we come here and it's like right what do we do first we get Sean or Rory hit where are we what are we doing and then we want a shot of the riders shine uh, signing autographs a shot of the targets backpacks that we've been given away quite a lot of structured branded things like to, to to keep the sponsors happy family power sports before we turned up they knew they were getting uh, X amount of photos or, or videos and stuff on stories posts Twitter everything it, like just creating a structure and, and following it through it's it's a little bit easier when you actually get here and start doing it you know the, the real stage is like before Josie and I went to um, for everyone who didn't know like she's my other half but she's the, the comms manager here at the team um, she joined this year um, and this is like one of my own sort of this is like a key thing I do on race weekends but in between the grand scheme of things a bit of the smaller things that I do it's mainly her sort of role uh, we went to New York just before we got here you know so getting things sorted and prepared before that was a real task uh, and now it's just putting it into action it must be difficult when you've got Pod, clueless podcast host going, Matt, what do I do about this? Can we no, do this? No, what about no, this? not at all. How about we do that? Not at all. No, like you're like, yeah, you know, someone who we work with and things like that. So it's, it's trying to, I mean, the best part is I can incorporate several different people I'm doing things with. It's great, you know, and uh, and why not indeed? Because um, you're doing some great things with the podcast, shining light on people who might not otherwise get um, interviews in limelight. Um, and like this weekend, Moto America aren't here. So actually there's none of the, the local media, really very few of them, who come here and want to interview Sean or Rory or Eaton or John. Which is um, a surprise. Yeah, but it's just it's the, it's the nature of it. And that's what we're trying to change, you know, build their profiles and, and make some videos which are, which are showing personality so they show that they're worthwhile talking to. How much are you looking forward to the weekend with the team at, at their home round? I mean, yeah, yeah. Is, you, you were at Portimao, which you had your, your other hat on, the, the, the Red Bull MotoGP rookies. Yeah. Um, working with the younger riders there, which, which I, you know, our passion is is the younger riders, yeah. and they are the stars of the future, absolutely no doubt. And from a from a British point of view, um, with Casey O'Gorman and and Reece Stevenson um, and Eddie O'Shea and Eddie O'Shea as well in there. I know you, I forget Eddie every time because he, he kind of seems to have dropped the radar a little well, bit. Well, he's, he's been because, very injured with his artery issue with his femur, which so, didn't help yeah, at all. No, so no, we get, uh, now. get all three of those Brit boys in, which is fantastic. Um, how much are you looking forward to the weekend as part of the team? It, it must yeah, be incredible. Massively, yeah. I mean, it's actually way easier than it ever was previously and in previous sort of main jobs I've had. There's a lot less to do, but it's more sort of going things more in depth. Like something will take up about three three hours of my time rather than this this is one hour, then your next hour slot, then your next half hour slot, then this half hour slot, then this and this. And I, 
after a while, I, I don't like working like that anymore. I like things to be more structured, more in depth. Um, I think that's just sort of a lot of things that have happened over the last few years. That's the way I want to work. Uh, we're talking with a new member of the team today and sort of who's a new videographer helping out with um, with the rider analysis stuff and just basically said to him like, mate, I don't like doing things last minute. I don't like to get stressed. I like to have basically a turn up. I know what I'm doing and I'm spending hours at a time doing different things in depth, getting them done right. Um, and that's what this is all about. And it's just great. It's so nice to see it inside of a team and how it really works, you know, and that's, there's just no, there's no comparison to that of, of anything else I've done. It's always been very shallow levels. If you think of it as an onion, I'm now getting to like the core of understanding a little bit more about what happens in a world championship motorcycle racing team, which is the thing that I've always wanted to learn about. Everything I've done, commentary, social media, like the tweeting aspect, social media management, then some content creation. But for Dorna, everything has been trying to get to that core of what is it like inside a team? And here we are, we get to see what it actually happens, the riders' personal struggles, the what the processes they go through, the roller coasters mentally. It's, yeah, it's, it's awesome. It's a, it's a real, real dream position. It's a fascinating insight, yeah, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, and people looking from the outside of as great a job as you did on the commentary and with all the um, the social media and what you introduced, as we said on the previous show, pulling in from my experiences last year and the year before with the OMG Racing Yamaha team, I adore working with a team. Yeah, it's it's, cool, it's because we're people people mm. i think that's the difference and watching people grow how they deal with certain situations you're now right in the thick of that yeah it must be a breath of fresh air after the last yeah. five seasons uh yeah five full seasons traveling yeah. seven seasons in total, in total. And stuff no exactly and i always thought this when you were doing omg i was like wow that's yeah the, the insight you must get sort of um to see yeah everything that happens the reason why you know sean and rory unfortunately had that uh, that disappointing mechanical in um in argentina um unfortunately like no one really knows the reason what happened it's one of those electrical things like an electrical bug which happened to all of them it happened to um a couple of other teams during testing we're told and no one really knows the reason why and it's there's no one really to blame but sort of seeing that not only that understanding what's actually happened even though no one knows what happened <laughs> Seeing the riders' reaction, what the team talk about, how they reacted then, how they're coming back from it now, and getting that kind of insight, just yeah, so it's so cool to understand and, and to see, to see it happen and, and be a, a very play a very very small part of that journey. How's the season going to play out for you? How many rounds are you going to make it to? Uh, we're doing 15 in total, Josie and I on site, which is really, really cool. Um, some overseas, like this one here, but the rest will just be from home. We basically shoot content at the races we're at. We edit it and publish it, sort of accord at the appropriate time at the next race and things like that. So if we want to do a feature on FP1 and, you know, a race we're not at, India, for example, uh, we'll shoot content in Assen ready like photos captions stories we want to talk about like i don't know the what does rory's data guy brian do mm. on a session here's what happens in fp1 here's what he does we'll gather that content that information those photos those videos and we'll publish it fp1 india to contextualize what's happening at the track happy days doing that from my sofa at home and our jimmy jams <laughs> this is how social content creation yeah, exactly, works this exactly. is how communications managers work yeah. in moto 2 world championship teams mate i can't wait for the weekend i'm so excited to to, to join you yeah here in texas and so when we go back 10 we said earlier on we go back 10 years to, to the paddock chatter days of, yeah. of twin interviews thanks to tim teal um and going back to those days with Ollie and Alana and here we are now. mate, here we are now. Yeah, we're, we're, we're actually out in Texas yeah. waiting on, not on the no, eve. From these walls no, not from these walls, but we have got an awful lot of I promise you, we are. Look at my, look at my yeah. sunburn. <laughs> have we got, I don't know if we've got anything. Ha, ah. ha, 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 look. He, he just printed that off himself. Oh, he right, here we go. <laughs> Thanks for passing me that earlier on, that's fine. But no, it's, it's going to be a mega weekend. And thank you for, for lining the boys up for us and to inv inviting us to the Family Power Sports here. No it, it's been a fantastic evening. I can't wait to see how the weekend progresses for the team and to be sort of just sat in the background watching it all unfold and watching you create and create the content that you do along with Josie. It's going to be mega. Cheers, dude.